There's a story of a wise master who has three servants. And after long service, he calls them together to come to him. And to the first one, he says, you have served me long and well here. I give you five talents. To the second, he says, you have served me also long and well. I give you two talents. To the third, he says, you have also served me long and well. Here, I give you one talent. The first servant goes off to the market and uses his five talents to trade and finishes up with ten. The second also goes to the market, trades, and ends up with three, one extra. The third servant, valuing the talent that he's received, wanting to be very careful with it, digs a hole and buries his talent in the ground. Months later, the wise master invites the servants to come back and ask them what they've done with the talents that he's shared with them. The first says, I went to the market and I traded with the talents and I've turned those five into ten. Second explains, I also went out and used those talents and I've turned my two now into three. The third servant says, I was worried that I would lose what you gave me. I wanted to take very good care of it, so I dug a hole and I buried it in the ground. The wise master looks at the third servant and says, take your talent and give it to the servant who has ten. Now, this is how to break comfortable inaction. In companies, in our lives, we have a tendency to, towards inaction and to get comfortable in a world of inaction. So there's a couple of ideas I'd like to share just around how to break comfortable inaction. First, I was uh, a month ago listening to Werner Vogels, the CTO of Amazon, the online book and now everything retailer, speak about how Amazon has a number of policies. The first of which is what he called the institutional yes. If an employee comes to their boss with an idea, if the boss says yes, he doesn't need to do anything. If the boss wants to say no, he needs to write at least a six-page memo to justify why he's saying no. So in, in your own life, are there ways that you can force yourself to make it more difficult to say no to new ideas than it is to do nothing? Because your tendency as a human being will be to do nothing. And the tendency of our companies will be to, do, to take no action. The second is realize that life is a series of thousand day careers. Paddy Miller, a professor here at ESA, talks about managing your, your career as a series of thousand day phases, projects. And a thousand days is about three years. The first year, you know nothing, you don't know the people, you don't know what to do, so really you're learning and you're getting out there meeting people. At the end of the first year, you're in a position to actually start doing something. You know the people, you know what needs to be changed, you're full of energy, by the beginning and towards the middle of the third year, you'll start to hear yourself saying, no, that won't work around here. So when you get to the third year of a job, when you get to the third year, the, towards the thousand days that you've been in the same type of role, you need to do something to change. And one idea, be, learn a new language, learn something that you know very little about so that in some part of your life, you're keeping alive this curiosity, this humility, this knowledge that you know nothing. And be very worried when you're reaching a thousand days if you start to hear yourself responding to employee after employee with, no, that's been tried. No, that won't work around here. Or you're starting to defend some of the changes that you made and are now part of the infrastructure. So how can you bring an institutional yes into your own life and make sure that you're highly vigilant as you're reaching a thousand days in any job or any area of your life. Break comfortable inaction.